working so far. Five of, of his first six games have been wins against TCU on Saturday. Dick Valdez though, traveling. Bob, not the chair. Heavens, not oh, the chair. Oh, no. no, no. End of the half, Knight has something on his mind. He's chasing Valdez down on the way to the locker room. They were up by 21. <laughs> Second half, Knight talking to Valdez again. Valdez here to Andy Ellis. Ellis at 22. And Texas Tech and Bob Knight over Billy Tubbs and TCU 99-86. Knight's now won six of his first seven. Last season, Texas Tech won nine for the entire year. Knight agitated in the highlight, but after the game said, I have not had a team play better than that, especially early in the game. A couple of coaching legends, Roy Williams, Rock Chalk, and Lute Olson bared down. KU in Arizona, first half. Arizona, no answer for the Jayhawks down low. Nick Collison draws a double team, and Drew Glidden goes up for the slam. Gooden led the Jayhawks with 23 and 15 boards. Kansas up a deuce. Later in the half, Gooden going to return the favor. This time, he draws a double team, and there's Nick Collison. He gets wide open. This time, he catches the pass. He gets the dunk. Kansas would lead by 15 at the half. Collison had 14 points, but here comes Arizona in the second. Led by who else? Jason Gardner. They're down 11. He gets the steal, goes the other way for the bunny. Arizona closing the gap. Later in the half, Wildcats trail by 11. Not anymore. Give me all three of these. Gardner had eight three-pointers, a career high 34 in the game. Cats down eight. Arizona's next possession, same score. Gardner from three. Why not? No, but Ricky Anderson there for the tip in, has his back. Arizona will pull it within four. Anderson had 17 points, but Kansas too big, too tough. Jeff Boshi, who I believe has played at Kansas since Will Chamberlain was there, has air this year. Hits the fifth three-pointer of the game. Kansas beats Arizona after the game. Roy Williams said simply, I'm ecstatic. Lute Olson said, you could see the experience. They played a whole lot smarter than we did. We go up to the mitt now for more college basketball. Excuse me, Billy, I'm jumping on your highlight. Stanford and Texas, T.J. Ford picks up the rebound, tries a desperation three, no good, and not there. So we go to OT Texas looking for the upset, and OT Texas down 68-66. Royal Ivy misses the shot. Chris Owens, 26 points, 11 boards. Texas up one after the free throw. Now Texas up five. Owens a steal, passes to four to lays it in. Big story in this game, Casey Jacobson at Stanford only nine points. Texas wins at 83-75. As I was saying, sorry Billy, to the mid. Pioneer High School in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Short walk from Chrysler Arena, Lavelle Blanchard of Michigan, Ryan Sidney of BC. They played at Pioneer, second half, down nine. Michigan, actually Ryan Sidney there with the left hand. Doing some things, wearing a headband from three, bang, got that one. BC was tested in this one because Blanchard drained the three, made it a little bit closer. Ryan Sidney again, though, too much. Inside Detroit Bell, Troy Bell had 29. And head coach Mike Davis won in the Dean Dome. Could they win in Carbondale, Illinois? Not so fast. Roland Roberts rejects a shot by Jared Cole. Jeffrey Newton gonna get it, but he can't beat the shot clock. Saluki's bench getting geeked, feeling upset. Saluki's leading by 10. Kent Williams going to drive, going to shoot over Newton. He led the Salukes with 22 late in the second half. They're up eight. Marcus Belcher going to bury a three-pointer. Give me all three of these. SIU up 11. The Saluki faithful storm the court. They have up, upset the 24th-ranked Hoosiers by 12. IU shot 32% for the game. Hoosiers coach Mike Davis said simply. College hoop action. Top-ranked Duke against Clemson. Jason Williams to Daniel Ewing. Duke was up 17 second half on the break. It's Ewing looking for Carlos Boozer. Boozer at 23. Duke had an impressive win. Whatever, whatever. 96 to 80. Whatever. Maryland hosting Princeton. Maryland down four. Byron Mutson steals it, takes it the distance. Turbs within two. Those pesky Princeton Tigers. Game tied, four minutes to go. Chris Wilcox inside got the hoop gary williams and the maryland terrapins take the lead for good and pick up the victory uh, with north carolina win its first game of the season hosting georgia tech georgia tech down three chance at the tie jason cape with the steal melvin scott no relation to stewart carolina wins it 83 77. uconn no ranking no discernible swagger not a whole lot of love from critics but they do have this on the terps they beat them down the last three times they've played and the huskies have on the mantle what the terrapins want a national title Title game of the BB and T Classic. Early first half, Maryland up 5 1. Dixon misses the short jumper. Ball tapped around. Lonnie Baxter grabs the board. Can I get a little bit? Baxter, 10 rebounds. Maryland up 9 2. Jim Calhoun, unhappy with his team, giving up nine straight points, gets teed up. Dixon hit the freebies. And then seven minutes gone in the first. Dixon misses the three. 
chases down the board, feeds Lonnie Baxter for the jam. Baxter would score nine of Maryland's first 19 points. Midway through the first half, Talit Brown feeds Johnny Selby. Oh, that ain't right. Part of a 13-0 UConn run. Late first, UConn down four. Tony Robertson brings the ball up uncontested, just takes it to the hole, hits the runner. UConn would be down two at the break. Early second half, Maryland up six. Steve Blake on the alley. Lonnie Baxter straight, freaking the oop. Baxter, 24 points. Nearly six minutes gone in the second. Baxter with the steal. The deal, keeping it real. Part of a 16-4 Maryland run. Next UConn possession. Huskies down 14. Robertson feeds Karan Butler. Butler elevates and says, Lonnie, you may have some game, kid, but I can bring it hard. Butler at 20 points. UConn down 12. Just over six left. Lonnie Baxter. 26th career double-double. 24 points, 10 boards. Maryland wins it 77-65 to win the BBNT. Lonnie Baxter was the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and from the Department of Redundancy Department. Eight of 10 from the floor, eight of 10 from the foul line. Said Baxter won MVP at the MCI Center. It's my senior year. I'm from DC. I really wanted this MVP trophy. Said Husky coach Jim Calhoun. They gave our kids a good lesson on how to play team basketball. Through 24 games last season, Lonnie Baxter had just four double doubles in the Terrapins, 15 and nine. Since then, Baxter, scoring average has remained the same, but his rebounding numbers have bigged up. During the stretch, he's posted 10 double doubles in 19 games, 16 of them wins. Missouri at St. Louis, under three to go in regulation. Clarence Gilbert gets up on the wing, drives, pulls up jumper, satin, so smooth. Gilbert, 18 points and eight of 15, shooting 39.2 seconds left. Mizzou, up three, trying to get it in bounds. Randy Pulley knocks it up. Missouri's Ricky Paulding. Billikens get the ball. Marquis Perry would hit two free throws at the other end. The lead cut to one. Under 30 ticks to go. Kenny Brown gets it inside. His shot dismissed. Perry comes up with a loose ball and lays in the junk. Lead cut to one with 17.4 ticks. After free throws, push the lead to three. Perry again with the ball. Dribbles around the top of the key. Why not? Why not indeed? Perry, long range, muddy. 20 points tied it at 67. 4.8 seconds left. Missouri with a chance to win this thing over a team that won in an upset. Stokes comes into the front court, left side with three, gets to the two, puts it up, 17 footer for the win! Missouri wins it! On a 17 footer from the left side of the key by Wesley Stokes. Mizzou's two big scorers, Kareem Rush and Gilbert, both told Stokes during the timeout, give me the ball. Stokes ignored him, and it is second basket of the game. Ball game. Missouri wins it 69-67. At 8-0, Mizzou is off to its best start since going 11-0 exactly a decade ago, but this win was barely a win. The Tigers just one for 10 from three-point land. It was also exactly a decade ago that the Billikens lost their first three games at home like they've done this season. They finished at 91-92 campaign, 5-23. and 23. Great game in Milwaukee between them. Temple in Wisconsin. John Chaney watching the second half. Lynn Greer go crazy. The jumper over Freddie Owens. It's good. Later in the second half, Badgers up three. Devin Harris, 4-3. And Wisconsin goes up six, but under 10 seconds to play. Temple down three, and they go to the man with the hot hand, and that's attached to the arm of Lynn Greer. Well, we just say hot arm. We go, it's a hot body. 53. 53, we're in overtime now. Under right. 10 seconds to go. Greer drills a three-pointer. We go to double overtime, in which Are you Greer saying scored... I'm trying to tell the information. Okay. Greer scored 10 of the ten, six of the 10 owl points, and he had 47 points in the game, a career high for Greer. Temple up three with 10 seconds to go. Travin Davis pushes the ball up. He needs to take a three for the triple overtime. It doesn't fall. And Temple wins in two overtimes, 70-67. Greer left the court with a host of Cole Center records for most points, most field goals, 18, and field goal attempts, 38. The last guy to score 47 points against Wisconsin, Bill Bradley for Princeton. Against Chattanooga, they turn to Rob Grizzard. Second half, Mo Williams to Grizzard. Moments later, Williams, G to the Rizard. Tied by 12. Rich, don't try that anymore, dog. <laughs>
I just thought I'd sneak that past you. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. Grizzard, 16 Rich, points. Just stick to Schwitzy. Thank you. The dunk. Terrence Mead also had 16 for Alabama, which set a score. For prostate cancer, Fine was on the bench filling in, and Papa Bear would like what he would see if he was watching on TV. That's Preston Shepard with a three. He had 26 to lead the Orange. Deshaun Williams playing defense. Going to take it all the way in for the lay. He had 23 and 7. Here he is with a little more smooch. Number 9, Syracuse cruises 91-65 over Hofstra. And cue the John Cougar, Indiana basketball, well represented in this game. 1998, Mr. Basketball, Tom Coverdale. You can't let guys from Indiana shoot threes or they will absolutely kill you. IU up 12 midway through. Covered at 11 on the night. Jared Jeffries, Mr. Basketball in 2000. He had 28 on the night. Some of them came in traffic like this. And finally, Mr. Basketball in 2001, first Indiana Mr. Basketball ever to go to ND in state. And the freshman, Chris Thomas, gets Notre Dame within one. Irish running out of time. Matt Carroll, this has got to go, and I don't know how it doesn't go. Ryan Humphrey with a tip, and Irish still trail by one. Donald Perry fouled. He misses the free throw. That's probably the best thing that could have happened, because all they can do is get this heave from Humphrey. It doesn't go. Hoosiers hang on and win it by one. Benefits San Francisco wishing he would have sat this one out. Matt Mitchell with the alley, and Melvin with an oop. He had 12 in the first half, but then the Dons make it a game of it. Shamel Stallworth off the inbounds, hits the jumper, he's fouled. San Francisco down just 52-45 later in the half. Chris Jeffries fancy behind the back. And then Eli, who's got mad rise. They've won 20 in a row at home. Eli, first game back, had 22.7 boards. East Washington made a game of it against Gonzaga. Gonzaga down five, Dan Dickow drives, gets the layup. Zags within three of Eastern Washington. Later in the second half, Dick out of Zach Gord. It's the post move, and we're tied, and we're going to overtime. In overtime, Dick out took care of business. Puts it in. Gonzaga wound up winning for our Sports Center Showcase. Jason Gardner coming off a 34-point performance against Kansas, taking on Frank Williams, who got Illinois off and going early. Taking the pass all the way. He had 30 on the night. First half, Illinois up three, looking for more on the break. But there is Luke Walton picking it off, showing the determination, the guts, the guile. And one crowd surging towards the court. Still in the first half. Arizona up two. Jason Gardner bottled up by some solid Illini defense. You see the Illini switching on every screen, and Gardner cannot get a shot. Isaiah Fox winds up with it for a jumper, and that's the result Illinois is looking for. But later in the first half, Gardner gets freed up, mainly by a fabulous pick set by Andrew Zahn. Gardner for three, Arizona up eight, up ten later in the first. It's freshman Will Bynum bearing his second straight three. Arizona up 47-31 at the half, up two touchdowns in the second half. Gardner... Buries the three at 18 of his 23 after halftime. Illinois down 13 and rallying thanks to the defense and passing of Williams. The steal and the dish to Blandon Ferguson. Illinois within seven. Later down nine. Williams drives, dishes to Brian Cook. Illinois down seven. Moments later, down five. But that's when Luke Walton shows the vision, the court awareness. Getting back, oh, you can't come back from that. And Illinois could not. Just over a minute remaining. Rick Anderson. Nifty little hook shot. A career high 18 for him. And Arizona wins by five. They held Corey Bradford to three of 15 shooting and Illinois four of 20 shooting from three point range. Dating back to last season, Arizona has now played nine consecutive ranked opponents. It is seven and two in those games. A most cool group of cats, especially since. They were not ranked themselves coming into the season. The coaches told us before the game, like, people are going to be talking about flukes. If you, we don't win tonight and you guys lost on Saturday, let's see how you guys can respond. I think we took it as a personal challenge. We came out from the tip and played, you know, we played our, our, we played as hard as we could. We knew that Illinois was going to be a dog fight. It's going to be very physical. And uh, But, you know, I think we have the advantage by you know, playing in Phoenix. And we had we more of the crowd. And so that was a good thing for us.
Jason Gardner is on pace to break the single season scoring record at Arizona and as we told you he's not lighting up cupcakes just over 26 points per game all against ranked opponents that scoring average two points ahead of the record pace set by Colin Reeves in the 93-94 season. Wake Forest at Kansas, 22 against five. Bryant Nash gonna miss the free throw, but Drew Gooden, nice flush. 11 in the game for him, next possession for Kansas. Jeff Boshi, who has hair this year, to the freshman. Way Simeon behind the zone, he's patient, then he flushes. Kansas up 13. A minute left in the first half, Kansas up five. Now watch how Kansas beats the 2-3 zone. Bo Boshi gonna set a little pick. That's gonna seal off the man. The lane, Gooden gonna seal off the man. Outside, and Collison goes up. They learn him how to play out there at KU. Collison, 10 points at the half, Kansas up 11. Under five, left, Kansas up eight, Josh Howard. A secret, no more in the ACC. This guy can play at nine, Wake hanging tough within six. Then, off the Kirk Heinrich, miss Simeon. First game, he scores 10 points. Kansas is up 10, under two left. Kirk Heinrich, known as a shooter. Rich is gonna try to dunk, I don't know if he can. Oh, it rattles, it rattles, but he got up 13 points, six players in double figures for Kansas, they win it. Last year, the Deeks beat KU like a tied-up goat by 31 points, the fourth worst loss in school history. The folks at Fog Allen did not forget. 60 groups of students were camping out in Allen Fieldhouse Tuesday morning. Now, a game with arch rival Missouri normally draws 50 groups. Mick Collison led the way with 16. KU kept it close, only 20 of 40 from the line. Now, Iowa, they're like an NBA team. They kind of play every night, it seems like. And Greg McDermott, well, he's the coach. You might not know about him in Northern Iowa, but certainly you know about their alum, Kurt Warner. He's done some things. First half, Iowa up two. Robbie Sieverding for the Panthers. Gonna hit a three. And the Panthers, they're up one at the half. Northern Iowa Athletic Director Rick Hartzell thinking about an upset. I told somebody at the half, if we win this game, I'm gonna retire. <laughs> easy, easy, settled. Eric Smith now, start off 0 for 5 from three. Then he hits this one, Iowa by five. Then Smith with another three, Iowa by two. Like my man Mo says, you gotta drop it like it's hot. Smith with another three. The game now is close. They're down one. Smith, another three. His fourth in four and a half minutes. They're tied at 52. Iowa, well, they're trying to hold off the upset. Luke Recker, he's going to drive baseline. Mid-range J, he's got it. Iowa's down two. 15 seconds left. Iowa down two. Recker going to get double team. Sieverding. Sieverding going to pick up the loose ball. He would hit some free throws, and then the students, well, they're going to celebrate like they won the Super Bowl just like... Well, just like this guy, Kurt Warner, McDermott, getting the love from the fans. Northern Iowa, what an upset. Kind of hard to call them in-state rivals when one team beats the other for just the